video request of a video to review. Now, I'm not going to review the video. Uh, it was dead before it started. When, when, when a person like me uh, attacks the source of information, there has to be a really compelling reason to do it. So we're going to start with that. I'm not discussing what's in the video because the individuals involved show no restraint when it comes to lying or just leaving shit out. In the scientific fields, evolution is regarded as a fact even though it's called a theory of something for the same reason that gravity is referred to as a theory. We have a theory of evolution and a theory of gravity. We also have a theory of nuts, bolts, and screws, but that doesn't make them non-real. Saying that evolution is not fully accepted in the scientific community is not a mis misperception or a misstatement or an accident. It is a lie. That's it. The only individuals who ever try to question it might question a particular characteristic of it, like really simple saying, we don't have a complete fossil record for the same reason we don't have a complete listing of all stars in the sky. We can't see all of them. We haven't been able to find every single thing in the universe. We're not omnipotent. Claiming someone or something is omnipotent is not scientific. We can extrapolate from what we have what is most likely. Or just yell God did it or Jews did it. Same level of stupidity. It doesn't work. It has no practical value. It makes no sense and it's a chicken shit way of dealing with I don't know. Just say you don't know. Don't say it has to be God. And, most importantly, claiming that the scientific community hasn't settled the case for this or climate change or anything else is a lie and propaganda. A lie doesn't have to be propaganda and vice versa. You can tell the truth and be a propagandist. Here's a quiz question. The assertion that scientists the general infamous buzzword, all catch all scientists. What scientist ever said humans evolved from monkeys or apes? Or was it someone claiming they did that and keeps yelling it? Because it still works because it, in, because it insults people. I'm not related to some dirty animal. Get your hands off me, you dirty ape. Right? How many... I wonder what the scope of this trial balloon would be. Who made this claim that scientists ever said we descended from something that exists now? Well, if we descended from apes, why do we have apes? What if no one said that? Then your argument doesn't work when you put it on a poster saying, grow a brain morans. The Center for Science and Culture has nothing to do with science. It's very off-center and it ain't left of center, and it has nothing to do with any kind of culture in the United States. It's a very specific subculture. It's actually part of the Discovery Institute that has nothing to do with Discovery, but I do like the fact that they're using the same name Discovery Channel did, because we all know the Discovery Channel and History Channel are just complete shit. But the Discovery Institute is actually a conservative Christian think tank. That's a code word, think tank and Christian. I'm just joking there. But it is actually a code word. It's not a think tank. It's a propaganda mill. It's no different than uh, people yelling at the top of their lungs. Global warming, Al Gore, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if you're pushing a narrative, it's no longer science or fact. It's just horse shit. No, I don't like Al Gore. I don't like Hillary Clinton either. Whatever. They're behind the intelligent design movement. This meme on the net. It's a propaganda thing. It's a fake grassroots effort. It's astroturfing. They are the creator of the Teach the Controversy campaign. That's literally the name they gave it. In their own literature that they handed out trying to keep it from being disseminated among the enemies of apparently Christianity. Teachers and professors are the enemy of this particular bizarre brand of religion because learning how genetics works is the devil's work. Privately and not so privately, they will tell you that anything that isn't in alignment with the Bible must be the devil's work because they say so. What else do they say? On paper that has been found, sort of like OT level 8 from the Church of Scientology tells you exactly what the fuck they're about. What do they tell people about? They wish to defeat scientific materialism and replace it and any aspect of it in culture and society in the United States or anywhere else 
with the theistic understanding that nature and human beings are created by God only. Anything else must be unlearned. You must be deprogrammed. The centers will be open tomorrow. We call them churches. But it's not religious indoctrination or brainwashing. No, that's caused by the people who tell you if you plug a battery into a light bulb, the fucking thing turns on. Because science bad. They're also the author of something called the Wedge Document. It's a manifesto that says their goal is to change American culture. Altering America. Did we get to vote on this? By shaping public policy, this means they go specifically to the politicians, to reflect politically conservative, fundamentalist, evangelical, Protestant, apocalyptic values. Yes, they integrate the idea of forcing the second coming, including manipulating things such as Judaism and Israel and wanting the world to come to an end. But they don't talk about that. Sort of like uh, Church of Scientology doesn't talk about the space alien opera story from a guy who originally was a failed science fiction author who decided to start a religion. But let's, let's get on with this bizarreness. Okay, that's a decent motor... That's a really good motorcycle. Damn you. Anyway. <clears throat> and Philip E. Johnson's wedge metaphor depicting a metal wedge split, splitting a log with the word America driven on across the a side of it is actually used. So no, this isn't defining Gakur. So have I wasted seven minutes of your life explaining this? This is an organization whose expressed purpose with documents being released only slightly lied about them actually doing it, they actually admitted to it eventually, was about dividing America against itself and instituting a theological, religion-based, political system. This is absolutely nothing at all like uh, extremist Islam. No, not even a little bit. Atheism is your only escape from the shit that we've been doing for thousands of years to ourselves. Not atheism as a religion or a belief system or a theology, but as a methodology. Stop with the assumption God has to be part of the equation, and suddenly the equations don't have mystery meat bullshit you stick in because you don't want to acknowledge batteries work with light bulbs. Someone asked me to review a video where three idiots are talking. I'm calling them idiots ahead of time. You already know my opinion. I stopped really quickly. Again, one of the things you do if you're a propagandist or Satan is you divide people among believers and non-believers in whatever bullshit you're spewing by deliberately attempting to get people to hate you, like I do, by saying something that is simply demonstrably untrue, that tells everybody what you are. And the people who can't see what you really are, or don't care, say vote Trump or vote Hillary, either way. Yes, the Democratic Party got rid of my chance to vote for Bernie Sanders legitimately, so I put him in as vice president. I wanted to vote five times. You can't, by the way. Fucking Democratic Party. Anyway, David Berlinski. Berlinski. Berlin Sky, not Iron Sky. Opposes the scientific consensus on the theory of evolution. The concept of evolution is all he's about. That's his main thing. Why? The <clears throat> theory of evolution, the process of it, all of the components of it, works really good for modifying food. That's why corn looks like that. That's why the banana looks like that. Really stupid thing for Christians to bring up bananas being somehow designed. They're designed by us, by the way, if you didn't notice it. They start out being weird uh, looking. Almost all the food is, uh, is the effect of us modifying evolution by learning from evolution and manipulating it. Same thing with breeding animals everything else like that. Uh, but because it was used as a methodology for breeding preferred animals, it was loved and admired by Adolf Hitler because he wanted to breed a better human by taking literally every single right you have away from you about some of the most basic things about being a human. But science doesn't want to do that because the other part of that is you end up with mongrels being healthier than purebreds, which Hitler didn't like talking about. A purebred dog, as we call it, is genetically very narrow. 
mongrels live longer and are healthier and happier. That stupid mud up the street that's always seeming happy and is playful and can still fend for itself if you dump it in the wilderness, it'll actually survive better, is a lot better of a dog than that purebred whatever the hell you got. They all have defects that have been grown into them. We needed them for specific purposes. If you have a mongrel dog, it's, it's much closer to a wolf than what we have otherwise. Go adopt a dog, don't breed them. Just stop this. Yes, pure breeding animals, trying to improve them, doesn't work. With plants, it does in some ways, but it makes them weaker in other ways. That's why we end up having to use weed killers and, and fortify the ground more. Yeah, the food's better for us. We can control it, but we have to tend to it. Some plants will grow wild. Those should be the preferred ones. I'm against uh, non-natural selection. But that doesn't mean evolution doesn't exist. Anyway, David Berlinski is against the theory of evolution being a thought, being something you can actually talk about. He hates it for some fucked up reason. The ideological or or non-logical reasoning they have is not relevant. It might be ideological, it might be religious, it's not relevant. The bias is he's against scientific consensus on the theory of evolution being a real thing. So he just lies about it. People who study how life works on this planet do not think that the theory of evolution is just a theory. Because if you decide not to use it, you end up running into evidence constantly that points to evolution literally happening in front of you, including, very frighteningly, bacteria and viruses. Diseases reproduce faster. Their life cycle is much shorter, and more importantly, their evolutionary processes are much faster. If you ignore evolution, you kill people. It's not a practical benefit to ignore evolution. So they say, well, only diseases follow that. They're very, very close-minded, except when it comes to shit that actually benefits them. Oh, wait a minute, these are the same idiots who claim that you shouldn't get an inoculation? You're not supposed to get vaccinated? I don't know that. I don't know that they'd say that. Who else was in that thing? Stephen Meyer. He's an advocate for intelligent design, which is defined as a pseudoscientific principle where you literally wedge religion and God into science and then bitch about it interfering. Well, they're anti-religion. Anti no, actually, science is completely separate from religion. The only time it gets in the way is when these assholes bring it up. Again, what asshole said human beings evolved from apes? The real answer is it's either somebody who is bullshitting and lying about, about science, trying to make them look crazy or bad, or it was really a scientist. If anybody's curious, no, we didn't evolve from any of the apes that are existing now, or monkeys, and we probably didn't evolve, apparently, from something that looked that much different than us. Uh, because that kind of change is pretty extreme. Then again, you can find people who have hirsutism. They're literally covered with hair head to toe. We have a bunch of old traits and new ones mixed together. Don't get me started on all the freaks on this planet. Some of you are it. If you don't know any freaks, might be you. Who else was in this video? David Gerlertner. Now, he's a special one. Um, he's a science geek as far as computers. I haven't actually talked about what they're into. It's not relevant. You can look them up. Their bias is overtly stated, and the first two are part of the Center for Science and Culture, which has nothing to do with either, and are part of the Discovery Institute. It's a propaganda campaign. Whenever they talk, they open their mouth, it's party line. That's it. This is no different than a bunch of de Democrats or Republicans yelling whatever the talking points are that week. Not really relevant, but okay. But they're not the point. The point is, this is an organized effort to anti-secularize the United States so that no matter what your religion is, it will be Protestant. It will be Christian. It will be anti-evolution. Even if it kills you for viruses. Let's get on to David. He opposes liberal academia in American society, saying they took over and indoctrinated the students. He calls them porgies, post-religious globalist intellectuals. He stuck the word globalist in there, too. He says he dreams of a world with no intellectuals. These are his assertions. His bias is he doesn't like liberals. That's it. Okay, hardline liberals piss me off, too. I'm a anarchist kind of liberal, more of a libertarian. But his idea here is that he is going to go after them. That's his entire point in life. 
None of these individuals lack bias. They scream bias as loud as possible. Proudly. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. My opinion of them is ignore them and just talk about the group. There's